Hi guys, Joa with Special Heart Studio. Uh, today I'm going to give you some assembly instructions on how to put together with the 3D effect the layered mandala pattern that I put out the other day. I have it here on my desk. Uh, it's so pretty in person. The pictures and videos just don't do it justice. So I have the pattern SVG specifically posted free on my blog. Feel free to download it and cut it out and I would love to see your creations on my Facebook page. Um, thanks everyone. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you pull the mandala into a design space is open it and determine what size that you'll want your project. So you'll see I, it's all grouped. All the layers are grouped over here on the right side panel. Since I was cutting the my mandala for a shadow box that was nine by nine inches square, I uh, used the, an eight inch project um, and it fit perfectly in this square shadow box from that I got from Michael's. So the aspect ratio up here is locked and I simply went to the width and put an eight and then hit tab. That changes all of the layers at the same time. You'll wanna leave it grouped so that they all change together. Um, from there, you'll just click make it. Um, I used the Reflections cardstock. It's 60 pound weight from Michaels. Um, so when you are working on your project, you'll wanna use the appropriate material setting. Um, I have a maker, so it gives me a bunch of different choices. And then once it comes up here, I'll show you which one I did. So here is the light cardstock setting, and that's what I'm going to use. Now that the project has finished cutting, um, although I only showed one sheet of paper, I want to show you how to carefully get the project off the mat. So I find it easiest to flip the mat upside down so that I can have the paper on the desk. Um, and then I bend the mat so that I try to keep the paper as flat as possible. Um, this top layer that you'll see, I'm working on the video here, is definitely the, the hardest one to do. It's the most delicate. And you just need to take your time and, and bend the mat and slowly, slowly peel it off. Um, it cut fairly clean, so that most of the inside pieces fell right out for me and I didn't have to, to work very hard at them. So just take your time be patient um, and like I said don't be afraid to bend your mat don't bend it so far it breaks but bend it enough that you can kind of peel off the the paper Okay, now that we have it all cut out, the cutting it, honestly, the cutting of it and figuring out which colors you want on which layer is one of the hardest part. Assembling it is actually pretty easy um, once you get the hang of it. So I um, didn't put any marks in here or within the design other than the like center hole. If you see the Second to last layer has a little tiny pinpoint. Um, and then the next few layers, of course, have bigger circles. Um, even when I do shirts, I'm more of an eyeballer uh, at, at lining things up. So I wouldn't say that this is an exact science. Um, I like to lay them out and, and see how they look, and then we'll start putting the the little tabs in. So this one will be really pretty. 
Um, I'm going to assemble this the way I did the, the very first one to show you. Um, I was worried and I have been was using these reflections from Michaels, little foam adhesive mini circles. Um, the first one I also used the edge, so I poked the little circle out, but then you can use your scissors and, and don't waste the other part that it comes on, you know, the around the edge, you can use that too. But I was still really w concerned um, because this very first layer was so thin. So um, I used school glue, um, grabbed one of my daughter's glue sticks, and I have a piece of just blank copy paper here because I don't want this on my, on my mat, um, but literally just took the glue stick and rub this specifically around the outside edge, but I kind of I did the whole thing. I um, wanted to get the inside real good. It comes out purple, uh, but it dries clear. So I do this first so that it can dry while I then um, focus my attention working from the bottom up. As you can see, the purple turns clear pretty quick. Uh, so I'll carefully pick this up. Um, and then I'll take my second layer here, if I can get a hold of it. Really can't get a hold of it. And just carefully place this um, so that it's even. There we go. Place this down. Make sure all the glue spots are stuck. And then I set that to the to the side up here. Uh, like I said, then I went to the bottom. And this is where I wanted to start using these little foam dots. I think some people call them pop 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 dots, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure that could be a brand even, um, but I've seen different people on Facebook refer to them that way. So these are, it's basically a, a double-sided foam tape. Um, I stuck one in the middle and I pull the little things off. This I have found it's easier to poke them through with my weeding tool. So I, this is what I do. Go through here, literally put these around the edge. Oops, might help you to take the backing off. Let it stay on there. That should be good enough, and then we'll go through here. Carefully peel off the double stick part. One more. Once I did that. I literally just line 
this up so that it is centered on the layer below. So we'll push that one in the middle, um, get these all around the edge, and then that leaves that little bit of space. I'm not sure it'll show on the video. It does. Um, so that it gives it the 3D effect. Uh, turn my pile over here so that it I get them in the right order. Um, so again, we'll just do the same thing. Um, this time that, of course, the hole's already there in the middle. So I, I will probably uh, This is what I did before. I just kind of put three here, just so it has the support and doesn't, in the future, start caving in in the center. This is where I don't like to waste. So like I said, I literally cut this apart too. You can use it. Oops, it doesn't go flying. I'm sure I could probably even cut this down a little bit more, but for the sake of time, I'll just do this. Again, we'll go around the edge. These here. Truly, truly, the hardest part of this project is um, figuring out which layer you want to cut in which color and then of course getting it off of the mat without ripping it. Um, it truly helps if you bend your mat and try to keep the paper on your work surface. Um, I showed that earlier in this video series here. Uh, the other thing that I found worked. I, I didn't have to do it on this one, probably just because this is the second one, so I have a little bit more experience um, putting this together. But the, you can't even tell, but this one I made and have already put in the shadow box, I had really bent um, a couple of the layers trying to get the paper off. And I started up my Cricut Easy Press I have a big heat press too, but sometimes I find the, the easy press. I, I have a nine by nine and the little mini. So I use the nine by nine. I just left it, I think it defaults when you turn it on to 250 degrees um, and put the paper under, the, under it for just a, a couple seconds. The creases um, and the bend in the paper came right out. So I'd be careful um, depending what material you're using uh, you know if it can be heated up or not but this was just plain cardstock it wasn't printed there was you know no vellum or anything so I felt comfortable doing that and it, it worked really well um, flattened the paper right out and uh, you couldn't even tell that it had been bent so again I'll just line this up in the middle gently press on those tabs We'll repeat this again. Might as well use some more of this. We'll cut these. I'd love to know in the comments, are, are you guys savers? Do you save all your scraps and use every little piece of material? Or, or would you go through and use the dots and throw the, the frame of the dots away? Um, Leave, leave, the, leave a note in the comment, let me know 
sometimes it can be helpful to have these types of, I don't know, what would you call them, scraps? Um, you know, pieces you could potentially use at another time. I know with my vinyl it comes in handy. I need to come up with a design that can use some of the the little scraps of the HTB. Let's see, we'll do, uh, might as well use these. We'll do this. Put a couple more around this middle part. Uh, I'll call that good. Let me peel the second. Was already ready. And then again, we'll line this one up. Stick it on here. Ooh, that one might be a hair off center, but good enough. Okay, two more. Let's see, we'll use these in the middle. see. Sometimes it's just a best guess where these can go and, and not show. I try to get it so that if you see it too much from the side that they they don't really show. Um, I think most people use these types of designs in shadow boxes so you probably won't see it too much. I know that's that's what I did with my first one that's in the shades of pink. Um, absolutely love it. Hung it above my machine as you see in the the post. So it's been a fun little project. Oh, I don't want to cooperate and it's already sticking to my finger. Probably going overboard on these stickies. I bet you could get away with with less, but I'm kind of a symmetrical person. I like things even, so I place them all the way around. Let's see, we'll do that one. I'll put it there. Oh, it moved. Nope, it's kind of pivoting. Maybe it's better to push them in the middle first. Oh, huh. I didn't pull the, oops. Guess that would help. Got ahead of myself. Need to pull the other side off.
Okay, let's try that again. Okay, one more layer, and this is the one that I glued. It's already dry. This one's um, the top, the white is a, a pearl paper. It's so, so pretty. Um, we'll go ahead, put some dots on this one. This is a bit trickier. This is the, where it gets thin, and the reason that I uh, decided to just glue that very top layer directly to the, the second layer. It's just, I didn't think it was thick enough. I think I'm just gonna put these three around here. Uh, let's see. I move that that way. Um, and I have another empty row here. I think I'll cut these a lot thinner. I know you can buy these in squares and you can even buy this in a tape and a roll. So this, since we're confined to home and, and you know, we've been asked not to go out as much as possible, although the craft stores in my area are still open, I decided to just try to use what I already have on hand. Might have to trim these down a little bit more. Let's see. Okay, so this one, I think I'll stick it. I think I could cut it in half. This one, the paper's coming all the way off. Do that again. Mm, this one's really odd shape. Let me just throw that part away. Uh oh. Nope, it doesn't show through. Well, that one stuck to my desk. We'll try again. more we'll be done go. That one's a little too close to the edge for my liking, but we'll see if it shows. That one's already off. My apologies for mumbling. I like to talk to myself when I when I uh, craft, and I guess even when I'm recording a video, it seems to happen. Okay, let's see. Center this up. There we go. That one does show just a hair. I think I'm gonna put this one in um, 
other shadow box and hang it in my daughter's room. She won't even notice. There it is. So pretty. I don't know if the pearl show on the video. Oh, there a little bit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I do have a couple more of these in the works and I'll be posting them as soon as I finish them. It's been a lot of fun. Um, if One other thought, if you wanted to make this a little less, less layers on this, um, I think you could leave out the third, fifth, or second, third, and I'd leave out every other layer. <laughs> Can't seem to count right now. I'm, I'm a little hungry, so. Um, thanks for watching. Feel free to hop over to the my blog and download this design. Um, right now, I only have it available in SVG format, um, but it's there for free. Thanks.